Hey everybody, Ian from Novel Music here, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the custom pad layout for the push controller and controlling polymath and model. I'll use polymath as the example, but everything I'll show you here, minus anything to do with scales, is also available on model. To start off, when you go into the polymath device, you'll have three options here at the top. Main, scales, and what at first will appear to be uh, track one notes, but it may be something else depending on what you have your current settings uh, configured as. Main gives us controls for play playback itself for the entire device, the through setting, the clock ports for the incoming clock pulses that drive the sequencer, and uh, the reset interval. Also, push can be, this custom layout itself can be turned on and off with this parameter here at the end. Scales is showing us the current scales that we are using. The way to look at this is, uh, let's ignore the top part of the uh, pads here for the moment. We'll focus on these two rows and the bottom two rows. This is scale one and this is scale two. Now the way to look at this is now I have C major set up. This is C, D, E, F, G, A, B. These uh, unhighlighted squares here represent C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp. Or B flat if A sharp hurts too much as it does for me sometimes. Let's do harmonic minor. This is C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B natural. So it's the way I try to give you a visualization of which scale you're currently using in polymath when the grids are triggering notes. Which notes are they triggering? Well this is a quick way to see. But another part of this that's handy is if we go to the user modes. Now you see the squares have turned red and we actually can enable and disable them as we can on the device in front of the computer. So this from here you can create your own custom scales to use and this is true for scale 1 and down here for scale 2. Also on this menu you have control of which scale globally all four tracks will be favoring in percentage. So when it's 100% that's actually scale 2 and 0% is scale 1. Now for the sequencing. You can access the different tracks here 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can access the different sequencer lanes with this row here. Notes, octave, this is the velocity, duration, strum, ratchets, pitch bend, and then we have an extra lane here for assigning hub inputs if you want to control the scale offset remotely and the hub output if you want to send the results of the sequence to another instrument in your live set. You can also turn the output of the local output on or off in this area as well. Up here we have uh, four more squares that give us some more options here. This green one here is giving me playback direction, number of steps. Let's go ahead and reduce that now to eight, eight steps. And I have the uh, shift function. You can shift where we are out of the 32 steps. Trigger ratio, reset if it's on or off, monophonic or uh, polyphonic output, and the lock feature. This next uh, square next to that is uh, giving us some more of the parameters, but instead f global parameters. So these three are actually all for global parameters. This is global offsets and triggers, etc. This is the global depth for all four tracks, and this is for the deviation, global deviation settings for all, f all four tracks. Now to build the sequence, let's go ahead and start the sequencer. And we don't have anything loaded, so how do you do it? You, you first select which step you want to edit, 
and then here these empty squares there are 12 of them here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 these represent the 12 squares within a column or a step that you could trigger on and off so here I've toggled a what ends up being a triad let's put something on step 4 And why don't we get something more interesting rhythmically going? We only have one clock right now. Th these four uh, buttons here deal with turning clocks on and off. So right now that's no clocks on, clock one, clock two, and then I have three and four here as well. So we'll have clocks one and two running. And now we have more rhythmically interesting activity happening. Let's add a ratchet on that last note. So to do that, we pick the ratchet lane up here. I already have this step selected, step eight. And, and then I just choose the number of ratchets that I'd like. I can also choose the envelope that I want. Yeah, I like that, using fall and slow. Let's do fewer ratchets. And let's say I want this step to sound an octave lower, so I'll go to the octave lane and there we go. And so this is how you, you can work with each step, access all of the lane sequence lanes that you normally would on the device in front of the computer but we're doing this all away from the computer and if you want to delete a step then you hold down shift and you press the step in question that you want deleted if you want to delete the entire lane then hold down shift and select that lane and now we're back to not having any anything going. And this would be true for any of the lanes, holding down shift. You see here I have, whoops, here I have the octave and I'll hit shift and now nothing's there. And if I want to reset the whole track itself then I hold down shift and I press the track and now I'm back to its default setting as if we just loaded the device we can also, let's try this out, we're going to again load some simple thing here and let's reduce the number of steps okay that sounds fine we can copy this information from this track to another track simply hold down the track that you're copying from and then select the destination track, let's use track 2 And since they're probably out of sync, since the playheads wouldn't line up necessarily when we do it, we can just simply start playback again. And now they're together. And I can decide that maybe this one is going to sound an octave lower. And that's an overview of how to use the custom push layout for polymath, but also, this is how it works for model as well. And these custom layouts ship with the Seeds collection. So thanks for checking this video out. Please stay tuned for the next video and I will continue trying to show off what this collection of devices can do and how it may be useful for you in your own productions. Thanks for watching.